And now um, I have taken it upon myself to bring to y'all one of the moments y'all may all have been waiting for as your hair sitting down in the sun. I will introduce to y'all the keynote speaker of the evening. He is the current reigning road match and Soka Mana King. One of, the, one of the most decorated and celebrated Soka, not just Soka, but Caribbean stars of our generation. No, let's make some noise. Or let's clap, man. You'll have to clap there. Ladies and gentlemen, make some noise. Hailing from my homeland, please welcome Marshall Montano. Wow. So much energy. Good morning. Thank you very much. FCSA, I would like to say all protocols observed, but I want to um, give a special shout out to Mr. Uh, Anil Ramnanan, who is representing Trinidad and Tobago. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not sing single anymore because he represents Trinidad and Tobago, but we went to school together, and I'm proud of him. So give him a round of applause. I also would like to thank Mr. Marlon Hill, who is also my advisor, like you. He's my lawyer. Thank you to him and his wife. So big up Marlon Hill for making this happen. Okay. First of all, congratulations on your 40th anniversary. Um, please bear with me. I am reading from notes. Usually I speak from my heart. So I will try to put it all together, but I thought that it was very important to make a few notes for this occasion. So first of all, thank you for having me. It's truly an honor to speak to the future leaders of the Caribbean. Um, my name is Marcel Jesus Montano. Today I will be giving information that is unknown. So you might get a few insights into my life that you may have never known before. Um, I hail from Trinidad and Tobago, of course. But please, please note that I consider myself a Caribbean man. And you will hear a lot more about that as I continue forward. I'm really grateful to for this opportunity to share with you. I consider this, you know, sharing about leadership and about success, especially as it pertains to my life. You know, people say I'm a successful entertainer, musician. I think I'm much more. I'm a successful person because as you know, I am the happiest man alive. And I, I think such is life. Success is happiness but it's all relative, so I choose to speak today about my success. I'm usually invited to places to sing and dance. <laughs> like, like <laughs> all right, all right. If you listen well, I might do some singing, all right? But, but, but priorities, priorities first. I mean, I was, I was here this weekend for Fame Weekend in Miami. I don't know if anybody went to the performance. I was also here for Ultra. Just, so all this singing and dancing over, but I'm here now to speak to you. And please, I have 15 minutes. I'm usually accustomed to speaking a lot. So I will try to fit all that I want to say into this 15 minutes. So let's get into it. Let's talk about uh, success. Let's talk about leadership. I think I am an entertainer, singer, songwriter, producer. I consider, consider myself a creator. But most importantly, I recognize that I am a leader. And I'm also a very normal, regular human being, as some people will notice. What is a leader? You know, and I tend to think of leadership as something that you have to do with your life. You have to lead by example. I think um, my life is my example. And I would love for 
you know, for you to spare me the moment to share some of my life story with you, which is exactly what I owe my success to my life. First of all, let me just switch this and read something for you. I want to say that the, the most important thing that I put first in my life is God. Because nothing happens without God, so I want you to know that that's important. And I woke up this morning and I have a daily prayer. And it's, it's so important to realize how everyday prayer could speak to you in a timely fashion. And when I say timely, time means everything. This morning the prayer said, Father, thank you for the gifts, talents, and abilities you have given me. Help me to find ways to share these gifts with others. Show me ways to mentor and invest in the lives around me so they can rise up higher and be all that you've called them to be. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. So, I, I felt very lucky this morning to have this opportunity to share with you. And I want to talk about my life. So, I was born in Trinidad and Tobago. And the most important thing is that I consider myself to be special. I think everybody here should do the same. You are from a special place. You are of special, you are of special um, DNA, especially mixtures. We from the Caribbean mix with everything. So I consider myself to be special, but I was also born dead, still born. No heartbeat, no color purple, no, br no breathing. And for six minutes, this doctor proceeded to slap and throw ice and cold water and revive me. And in times when I feel very, very low or when I feel not motivated or I feel, you know, to give up or to quit, I tend to pull strength from knowing that I was born dead. Knowing that I had to struggle from the beginning to survive or to live. And that says something special to me. It says that I have a purpose. So the first thing I want to stress in life is purpose. I want, to know, I want you to know that if you find your purpose, you know, half the job is done. A lot of people take long to find their purpose. You know, they're 19, they're 20, they're 21, they're 26. They still don't know what they want to do. They're studying, studying, they're going to this course, that course, they're professional students. They're staying in school till they reach 35 and living at home by their parents because they don't want a parent. This is good. Some people take longer than others to find their purpose. Take your time. But when you do find your purpose, you have to own it. So, I was born in Trinidad and Tobago, and I, yeah, okay. <laughs> and I spent only two years there, and I moved immediately from Trinidad, and I went to school for the first time in Jamaica. Yeah, I went to Mona Prep. My <laughs> Shabba. Uh, no, but um, but seriously, yeah, I went to school in Jamaica, and my parents went to Mona University. My father was a geologist. My mother was a guidance counselor, so they were both teachers. And I came back to Trinidad as a youngster living in Port of Spain, and I moved to South Trinidad, where South Trinidad, yeah. So everybody liked to say Marshall from South. No boy Marshall from Tongue. No boy Marshall from Jamaica. Well, Marshall is from nowhere and everywhere. I belong to you, you know. I think um. I moved to a small city called Separia town, and this is where I became famous. But let me just tell you how this journey started, right? I didn't want to sing. I never wanted to be a star. 
you know? But my brother started playing the guitar when he was young. And he needed somebody to sing because he had no rhythm. So he used to be like this, trying to play and sing. And he used to like, you know, pull my ears and say, come here, sing this. And I'll be like, and I'll start singing. And my mother will come in and say one day, she say, eh, eh. Eh, eh. But, but you have a good voice. She say, so she say, um, you want to go for singing lessons? And I said, okay. I went for singing lessons. I started singing with a blind teacher, blind music teacher. And he said, wow, you have a good voice. You want to sing in the choir? I was like, okay. <laughs> so then going in the choir now and singing and, you know, up in front, they say, hmm, you look like you're brave. You want to represent the school in Calypso competition? I was like, okay. <laughs> Went in in 1984 or 1982, somewhere there. I don't want to tell all of my age. But anyway, I won. The first competition I entered, I won. That, that could have been luck, even though I was kind of good. You know? But I started singing Calypso. I am writing a letter to the education minister because it has certain things going on and I wonder if he is aware. Everybody running their mouth and talking school children bad. Right? But the whole song is about only well, talking about the children bad, but the teachers worse. So I used to say, So why condemn me, Mr. Minister, when I'm just following the footsteps of my teacher? Yeah? So they didn't like me from the get go because I was a tyrant and I was like, you know social commentary, dissing the teachers and talking about the Minister of Education. But I started singing Calypso. So I won, and I won again, and I won again. And in 1984, this is just two years after singing, I found myself being invited to sing at Madison Square Garden with some of the greatest in the world. Mighty Sparrow, Lord, Lord Kitchener, you know, um, a few from Barbados, Griner. Any Bajans in the house? Yeah, all right. All right. We have any Grenadians in the house? Nice, nice. Haitian, Sakpasi, Hamule. What about the U.S. Virgin Islands? They have a big... USVI is a big crew. All right, all right. This, this is not the roll call. But I started singing Calypso with these guys. Okay, shh, shh, shh. So the most important thing that happened to me was I start singing this Calypso. I say, okay, 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 and I reach into a career. All of a sudden, I am a child with a career. But when I look around, I only see in old people. I see in people in trippy suit and people with canes. And I am like nine. So I asked my mother, like, you know, where are my peers? Where, where are the young people in this Calypso thing? And there wasn't any. I had one other person, two other people. So she said, okay, you want to go where your peers at? And we went to the club. So she took me to the club to perform. And I went into the club. And it was doing like this. Um, tainted love. Da, 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 da. Everybody was like this. Everybody was doing disco, dance all, everybody boggling and you know, and everybody was singing rap, R and B, hip hop, disco. It had this one group, lip syncing new edition. Gang gang ching gang. You know like all the moves and the girls was like the girls was like ah! so so I was like so I was like okay 
And I went to sing Calypso. And I started singing Calypso. And you know what happened? They went by the bar. They turned their back. They start to boo me. Boo, like, like, boo. The worst part was, the worst part was while I was singing, so why can't they me this? They were singing, amazing grace. So, so I quickly realized this Calypso thing not looking too profitable. It looking dim. Maybe I should sing reggae. Shabba. <laughs> no, but so I was like, maybe I should sing reggae. Maybe I should sing R and B. But right there and then was when my life 